Okay, now we know the ins and outs of the I.O. box color, it is time to show some other methods of making some color. We got a few notes that accept values to generate a color, like the HSV join, the join notes join values to form a color, and the split notes will split a color back into values. The HSV join note will let you insert some values so you can produce a color, and it works just like the I.O. box color. So, I can either change the pin by dragging up or down, I right click and drag, or I can right click and type in a value, and then I hit enter to confirm, or I can attach an IO box value to it. And then if I change the IO box value, this pin also changes, making a different color. The values you enter should remain between 0 and 1, but you can enter higher or lower values if you want to. Every pin is spreadable, so if we make a linear spread, and we set the spread count to, I don't know, 20, and then I connect this to the UE pin, and we have created a nice rainbow. Now to see this rainbow, we need an IO box color, so I double right click, and select color. Let's set this IO box to 20 rows, so we can see all the 20 colors we just created. And now I connect this, and you see I got 20 white colors. This is because we need to saturate the color. So if I make this one, we have our nice rainbow. In VVV, it doesn't really matter how you obtain your values. I mean, a value is a value. So you can just imagine the cool possibilities we have here. I can shift this rainbow by dragging the face pin up or down. Or I can make the rainbow narrower by changing the width. Then I can change the center color to something greenish. Pretty cool, huh? A similar note to the HSV node is the HSL node. HSL color join. Here the L stands for lightness. In Hair Inspector you see the output color. Now, if I drag the lightness from 1 to 0, you will see it starts at white, then goes over green, and then back to black. And of course this is also spreadable. So let me connect this linear spread to the lightness pin. And to make it easy I just select this IO box color duplicated, Ctrl D. And then I move the duplicated IO box color over here, and I connect it. And let me change the linear spread from center point of 0.5 or the input and a width of 1 and let's put the face back to 0. So now we got this nice gradient from black to green to white. And if I change the UE pin I can change the color of this gradient. For any reason you want to put values that are prepared for the HSV node into the HSL node, the other way around, you can either do some complicated math or use the HSV to HSL color, or the other way around, that's HSL to HSV. I'm not going to explain how this works, because the help file does a good job in explaining that for me. So if I just select one of these nodes and press F1, we will get this help file. And here you see what it does. See, you input the same values and you use this node to get the same colors depending on HSL or HSV. But over here, we can see the real difference between HSL and HSV. So if you're ever interested in the difference, just look at this help file. Okay, let's move this aside again. And bring in my hair inspector. Okay, on to the next one, RGB color join. Here we can just mix our reds, our greens, our blues, and we can change the alpha value. By default, all the values are set to 1, and that gives us this nice uh, white color. Now, let's duplicate our IO box color again. Control D. And let's move it over here. And let's put the RGB node over here, and make the connection. Now, let's connect this linear spread to the red pin. And we get this aqua tinted gradient. And that is correct, because we took out some red, leaving a mix of green and blue, or aqua. Now, if I want to make this gradient go from white to aqua, I can either make the width of linear spread a negative 
negative. This will reverse the linear spread for me, a negative value for the width, or, and let me reset this, a more easy way is just to reverse this spread. So to do this, I connect a reverse colors. Reverse color. A reverse node will let you reverse the slice sequence. Now if I connect the output of my RGB node to the reverse, and then I connect the reverse to my IO box color, I have reversed my spread. Of course, VVV is real time. So let's make a change in color. I make yet another HSV node, color join, and IO box color to see the result. I need to saturate my color, so I make this one. And next I just simply connect an LFO to the UV pin. And here I have a change in color. Now it goes a bit fast, so I change the period to, I don't know, 20. And now we got a nice slow moving color. I can also connect this LFO to the face pin of the linear spread and make our color spreads also move. And now you can see a bit how the UV range is created because the colors almost seem to loop seamlessly. Okay, let me toggle the pause pin of the LFO because the color changing annoys me. And let's take a look at the color split nodes. Well, the color split nodes can be used to split out colors to values. And it doesn't really matter what type you split to because these three, although they are created differently, are all treated like the same colors. So I can create an HSV color split, an HSL color split, or an RGB color split and I can connect them all to the same IO box color. And if we look in here in Spectre, you see that this is my input color, these are all my red values, all my green values and all my blue values. The same goes for the HSL all my UVs, all my saturations, and all my lightness. And the same goes of course for the HSV. So we can generate a color using the HSV way and split them with RGB, or the other way around, or whatever. Well, you get the point. A very cool way to get a spread of colors that match, but are a bit random, is by using the random spread. So let me delete all this. We don't need it, and this. We don't need it. This I want to keep. And I make a new HSV color join node. I connect it, get a bit of saturation. And now I make the random spread. Random spread spreads. A random spread will generate, well, a spread filled with random values. It uses the input pin as its center and the width is used to set the boundaries. So by default the input is set to 0 and the width is set to 1. So all the values it outputs are between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. I don't know the values that I get as an output because they are random. I only know the range. So let me set the spread count to 20 and connect the output to the UE pin. I will end up with these 20 random colors. Now if I want to change these random colors I just simply change the seed put the C to 7, it's this. I put the C to 72 and I get this. The seed is a number from which it calculates the random values. It's an integer and it can be anything. Let's say I want to create 20 colors that are random but all a bit blue. Well I know that the blue is a UE of 0.66. Now if I make the width smaller all the values will become more blue. And of course I can do the same with the saturation or the value. So if I just connect the same values here and here, I can get this very interesting random color spread. Next I do a little extended tutorial on the IO box value advanced. And then, now we know how to use colors, we can look at the more cool parts of VVV, namely textures.